Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm Dr. Askman. I teach uh, history at HPU, and I'm also a docent at Iolani Palace. And our uh, presentation today is going to be about Iolani Palace. Of course, it is not open currently, but hopefully when things uh, open up again, if you're interested in going, uh, we usually offer through uh, Student Life uh, a tour every uh, semester, at least one tour every semester, sometimes more, depending on interest. We usually get those uh, pretty full, pretty fast, so keep an eye open for that in the fall. And also, if you take my History 1558 class, we go on the Palace Field Trip as well. So, uh, I'd like to start today by just talking a little bit about the background, and then we'll go and sort of have a a tour of the inside of the palace and if anybody has questions at the end then you can let me know and I will try to answer those uh, for you. So hopefully everyone can see uh, what I have up on the screen. Uh, that is a picture of King Kala Kabwa. He's the uh, monarch who built the palace and so the palace actually only had two uh, occupants, the one that was, uh, the one that you see, I, maybe I should tell you a little bit about where it is, I'll give you a little more information about that first, but uh, King Kalaka over there, you can see, constructed the palace, and if you look at his uniform, we'll actually be able to see some of the things that he has on his uniform uh, in the palace. And I'll move on to our next image, this shows uh, Queen Liliuokalani, she was the last uh, monarch of the Hawaiian Kingdom, and she was the second uh, royal resident of the palace as well. So there were two uh, monarchs who lived in the palace, but there was a palace actually on this site before the building that we see today existed. So I'll put an image of that up. You probably uh, don't recognize this building because it was torn down, but this is the first uh, royal palace. It was called toward the end of its existence. It was also called Iolani Palace. And so this is on the same site, which is bounded by King Street, uh, and then Richard Street, and Punchbowl Street, and in the back by Hotel Street, or what it was called, Palace Walk. So this building was constructed during the reign of uh, Kamehameha III, so this is during the 1840s. It's a fairly small building. It had a coral a base and a wooden top. Uh, it was actually not lived in, so it was used for uh, official events and it was used for parties and dinners and such, but there were no bedrooms in this palace and uh, the royalty lived behind. There were some buildings behind that around the grounds uh, of the palace uh, today. Uh, this building had become very dilapidated by the 1870s, and Kalakabwa ordered it to be torn down and a new palace to be constructed, and that was finished in 1882. So let's take a look at that new uh, palace. So this is the view from King Street. You can see the gates uh, facing King Street. There are four sets of gates. I'll spend just a moment or two talking about the property itself. There are four sets of gates. They actually had different purposes. This uh, gate was is called Koikeau Uli, which was a name for Kamehameha III, who had the first uh, palace constructed back in the 1840s. And there were gates also for businessmen. There was a gate for retainers. That's in the backside. And the set of gates that faces the State Library building uh, toward the punch bowl side, that was the gate that was reserved for members of the royal family. You can see on each one of the gates, there is a coat of arms of the Hawaiian kingdom. So the gates are original uh, back to the 19th century. So let's go ahead and see a little bit closer up uh, the building. So this is the building itself. It was completed in 1882. It's obviously done in a Western uh, style. This was completed during the Victorian period. And a couple of things I'll mention about just the sort of structure uh, of the building itself. It was typically Victorian in the sense that they used a lot of materials and made them look like other materials. So when you see this building, which you probably all have seen, you might think that the building is made out of stone. 
uh, but it actually is not. The building is made from red bricks. So you can't see that, but behind the thin layer, so there's a thin layer of concrete that covers the building, uh, behind that is actually red bricks. So the structure of the building is red bricks with a concrete facing. Uh, another, and so that's made to look like something different than what really the building was constructed from. I'll just point out one uh, more thing, and those are those columns that you can see. They also look like they are stone or maybe marble, uh, but they are actually cast iron. And they were again made to look like something different by painting them, uh, covering them with sand, and then painting them again. So this was a very typical sort of Victorian uh, process to make things look like other things. Let's take a look here at the side of the building. So this is the side that faces uh, Richard Street. And the building itself is about 140 by 100 feet. Uh, there are sometimes special events uh, and the palace is decorated. So I think I have a picture Oops, I don't have, I have a picture of that later on, but uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about the king's birthday ceremony when the palace is decorated on the outside. So I think we're ready to head inside for our tour. So the first room we're gonna take a look at is the Grand Hall. So here you can see the Grand Hall. This is uh, standing on the King Street side, looking towards, uh, looking towards uh, Malka direction. And you can see the enormous staircase there. That staircase is made from a uh, very famous native Hawaiian wood, or mostly made from uh, a wood called koa. So you probably have heard of that before. Uh, this staircase is one of the largest koa structures in the world. Other types of woods were used from different places. So one of the messages that the king had for the palace was to uh, show Hawaii's uh, relations with other countries and also to show off its wealth and uh, display things from different places. So woods like uh, Douglas fir were used for the floors. Uh, they came from different places, Hawaiian woods, like I mentioned the koa for the staircase. Uh, arches that you see there and paneling on the walls, those are from the Pacific Northwest, a type of wood called Port uh, Orford Cedar. Now let's take a look at a few things that we can see in this room. Here's a side view um, of the paintings. So two things I just wanna point out about what we see there. You can see in the Grand Hall, paintings of all of the monarchs before the Kalakaua dynasty. So going all the way back to Kamehameha I at the end of the 18th century. So one of the purposes for this Grand Hall is to uh, show the continuity of the Hawaiian monarchy. So there were six uh, monarchs whose paintings are displayed here and also their uh, consorts or their wives are displayed. The ones that were married are also displayed here as well. Uh, and then you can see those niches there. They were uh, in the monarchy period, and again today, they hold a lot of things that were given to the king as gifts and from different countries. So we can see, for instance, a vase uh, that was a gift from the emperor of Japan that the king got when he went on his uh, world tour in 1881. So it was a way to show off the different connections, what he had with different countries around the world. And those niches contain uh, original items that were used in the palace during the monarchy period. This is another uh, image of the side of the Grand Hall. Again, you can see the paintings there of the monarchs uh, prior to the Kalakaua dynasty, and then also some of the objects in the niches that came from different places that were gifts to the king or acquired uh, by him during his travels from Europe, from Asia uh, as well. So let's head in to our next, oops, head into our next room. This is the blue room. This is the room that is uh, on the Richard Street side facing King Street. This was also sometimes called the parlor or reception room. And uh, you can see it is blue. And many, this is kind of a practice that was used in Europe as well for royal palaces to be named after um, different colors. So this room was named after the color of the furnishings and the drapes. And so it is blue. 
Uh, this painting that you can see here, so I do want to point this painting out. It's very large. Hopefully you can get a sense of that in comparison with the furniture uh, that you can see. But this is a painting of Louis-Philippe I, King of the French. So sometimes when I give tours, visitors wonder why there are paintings of uh, so many non-Hawaiian people in the palace. And that is because, again, it was a way for uh, the monarchy and the king to send a message about Hawaii's connections with other countries. So this painting, which is actually the largest in the palace collection, uh, was a gift from Louis Philippe, and it was a way for the monarchy to show its uh, connections and relationship and recognition by countries like France, which in the 19th century was a world, uh, a world power. So here again, we can see another view of the room and the blue uh, furnishings. These items actually come from the first Iolani Palace, so they predate the palace. So many of the items, and if you go and take a visit, when you see inside, many of the items are original. Uh, not everything is, but many of the items are original. They have been reupholstered, as you may uh, be able to see here from the photo. They look brand new, but they actually date back to the 1840s. And in this room, also on the side, you can see a large uh, painting, and that's a painting of Lili Uokalani. There's a replica of a dress that she wore as well. Uh, the two monarchs of the Kalakaua dynasty, their paintings are in this room. Okay, now facing the blue room is the state dining room. So that's where we are right now. The state dining room is where the official uh, dining events took place. So this could be state dinners or other formal events. It was not used for casual dining. This is a place where there would have been a lot of protocol. Uh, meals, a state dinner could have taken three or four hours. There could have been uh, seven to nine courses uh, during this time. So these were long events. They were uh, formal with printed menus that were uh, provided to each one of the people there as well. So I'll point out a little bit about the room itself and then some of the things that we see in the room. This room was actually used as the territorial senate and the state senate in the period after um, Hawaii is taken over by the United States. So this building looked very different after the end of the monarchy. It's kind of hard to imagine this room now with the way it is decorated. Uh, being used actually as a uh, chamber for the, for the territorial and state senate. So here again, we've changed uh, positions. You can see some more paintings on the wall. Uh, if, you see, if you look kind of closely, you can tell that they are not um, Hawaiian people. Again, these are European rulers who gifted these paintings to the Hawaiian monarchy. So these were sent from different countries like Prussia in what is today Germany, uh, Russia as well. And then they were displayed here to show the connections between Hawaii and foreign, uh, foreign nations. Here again, we can see on the opposite side some more of these paintings as well, including the large one uh, in the center. That is Napoleon III. Emperor of the French. This painting was again gifted to the Hawaiian monarchy uh, as a token to show the relations between France and Hawaii. Uh, and again, it was a way for the monarchy to promote its relations with other countries. So visitors who would have come in the 19th century would have been uh, receiving a message about Hawaii's connections with other countries. Now let's take a look at some of the actual items in the room. This is the dining room table with some original pieces. So again, not only uh, the palace itself is largely original, but many of the items in it are. So here we can see things set up for uh, a state event. You can see the porcelain there that is all original. Most of the things that we can see at this table here are original. Uh, the por Paris, Paris porcelain, it came from France and has all of the, uh, in the center of each piece, you can see the coat of arms of the Hawaiian kingdom. So again, it's to show, the, show off the wealth of the monarchy, its connections to other places, as you can see, probably from the furniture and the uh, 
um, decorations and such, it's very Western, although we're gonna see some Hawaiian things later. Uh, crystal that came from Bohemia in the Austrian Empire, uh, silver that came from uh, Europe. In fact, four or 500 pieces of the silver were also a gift from Napoleon III, Emperor of the French. So we're gonna head upstairs now to take a look at the second floor. Uh, this is the staircase that we just saw going up the staircase. You can see the staircase went up halfway and then split into two sides to go up to the second floor. Uh, so let's go in first into the hall on the second floor. So here we can see uh, the hall on the second floor. This is um, kind of a mirror of the grand hall that we saw on the first floor. We can see that this area is fairly empty. Uh, in the monarchy period, actually, there would have been a lot of uh, furnishing, furnishings and other things, decorations up in this area that was uh, very typical for Victorian uh, interior decorating was to put lots and lots of stuff. But uh, in a few minutes, I'll tell you about what happened to some of the pieces. But now we can see that actually the second floor hall is mostly empty. On either side of the halls, we have the rooms, and we're gonna start off with the king's suite. So if you're facing the, facing the image, the suite of rooms on the left-hand side, those were, oh, those were for King Kala Kabua. And left, right-hand, what am I saying? <laughs> left-hand side is the king. And then the right-hand side is for his wife, uh, Queen Kapi'olani. So uh, they had separate suites and separate bedrooms. This is again, a very Victorian custom. Uh, partly to show off, especially in the homes of the wealthy. People would uh, have a bedroom for the husband and the wife to show that they had enough money to do that. We're going to look first here in the king's bedroom. So this is Kalakabu's bedroom. Uh, we can see some of the original furnishings. We don't have all of them uh, today, but it's in this room that I want to show you a historic image to show you what the room looked like uh, during the monarchy period, and that is right here. We'll flip back to the other painting or the other image, the photo, in a few minutes. But this is what this room looked like during the monarchy period. And you can see, again, this is very typical uh, Victorian interior <laughs> design, which is everything should be covered, and there should be a lot of uh, knickknacks and things like that. Sometimes people describe this uh, decorating style as Victorian clutter. If we go back, we can see uh, the room today. You can see it does not have as many furnishings, but we see some original pieces, uh, including that urn in the corner, kind of over to the left. That is an original piece. If you take a few, kind of focus on that for a second, and then we go over here again, you can see that it's in that same place. So it has been returned to its original location. So if we look here, we don't see that much furniture. That is because uh, after the overthrow of the monarchy, a lot of things were sold off. And so the Friends of Iolani Palace, which is the organization that uh, runs the palace today, is trying to get back some of the original pieces. And so we can see some of those original pieces, uh, like that Minton urn from England in the corner there uh, in the original photograph over here. Now, I just wanna show you the uh, bed as well. This is not the king's bed. We don't have the king's bed. So uh, this is a bed from the palace, but it is not from this room. And what I wanted to point out to you from this photograph are the two large items to either side of the bed. Those are called kahili. They are feather standards. They were ancient symbols of Hawaiian royalty. So as we go through the palace, we see a lot of things, uh, very Western types of things, but we also uh, can see Hawaiian things as well. So these two uh, kahili, they are not original. They were put in, installed in the palace a couple of years ago on the king's birthday. Uh, they were very important symbols of royal authority. In fact, they were named, these two are named after the king's parents. Now, although they are not original, we do know that there were kahili in this room during the monarchy period. If we go back here to this photo, I don't know if you guys can see them, but if you look in the mirror on the wall, in the reflection of the mirror, you can see that there are kahili. So we do know that they were there. and We have 
an idea of what they look like, although these are not the original ones. We're going to move now into the King's Library. This is the next uh, room. This room was uh, used as a study and also as a cabinet room, so there were important meetings of the cabinet and of other uh, organizations of Privy Council, which was a another group of advisors to the king. So here we can see some of the books. Uh, the palace has some, but not all of the original books. Kalakawa had a lot of books. They were in many different languages. He was completely fluent in uh, not only Hawaiian, but in English as well. And we have some of the original books in the room today. That large book that you can see close to you on the table there is actually a dictionary that was a gift to the king. Uh, it's a Webster's Dictionary from the Webster's Publishing Company. Uh, he received that when he was in Boston when he visited the United States shortly after he became king. Now if I flip around, we're still in the same room here, but I want to show you uh, a little bit about technology. So one of the things that we see when we go through the palace today uh, that we might not really pay a lot of attention to is the technology. We're maybe focused on the art or the woodwork and such, but visitors who would have come in the 19th century would have been uh, very impressed by the high level of technology. And uh, that was another message that the king was trying to send with this palace is the modernity of the Hawaiian kingdom. So we're going to take a look at a, a few different types of technology that this palace had. If you look to the left, the door that is on the left, you can barely see in there, but that is the king's bathroom. So this palace had hot and cold running water in the 1880s. This is well before um, many people, even wealthy people, had indoor plumbing. So one of the modern technological features of the palace is uh, modern plumbing, hot and cold running water, uh, flush toilets. There were on the second floor of the palace four bathrooms and two on the first floor. Again, looking in that same direction over to the right a little bit, you can see a telephone. Uh, this is not original, but this is a replica of the second telephone that was in the palace. The first one was actually in the king's bedroom. Um, this one connected downstairs into the basement of the palace, and this was another new technology of the time. And one of the most impressive forms of new technology that we see in the palace is electricity. So when the palace was completed in 1882, it was gaslit. Uh, Kalakawa had taken a trip shortly before the completion of the palace, a world tour, he had visited France on this world tour and he saw a big exhibition about a new technology, which is electricity. So when he came back from the, on the way back from that tour, he stopped off in New York City and he actually met with Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, and he decided to have the palace electrified. That process was uh, completed in 1887. This whole palace was electrified inside and out. It makes uh, Iolani Palace one of the first residences of any head of state in the world to be fully electrified. Iolani Palace was electrified uh, entirely inside and out well before the White House. So it was another message uh, about the technological advancement of the Hawaiian Kingdom. The next room, this is the last room on the King's Suite. This is the Gold Room or the Music Room. And in this room, there would have been uh, musical instruments that were used by the royal family. They were all very talented musically. Uh, Kalaka will wrote the words to the national anthem, which is still our state song today called Hawaii Pono'i. Uh, and Lili'u Kalani, the last monarch, wrote many, many pieces of music, uh, such as Loho Oi and other pieces that you're probably familiar with. Just going to point out uh, in this room a couple of things. Here we have a close up. This is the throne. This is the first throne of the Hawaiian kingdom. So it was made uh, actually during Kamehameha III's time. So it was well before this palace. And when Kalaha ordered the new thrones for this palace, which we'll see at the end of the tour down in the throne room, 
this throne was moved back up or was moved up to the second floor and put in the gold room. So this is actually the first uh, throne of the Hawaiian kingdom. And it's original other than the upholstery, which has been changed. Here, I just want to point out a couple of interesting uh, things there on the wall, those images that you can see. I want to talk a little bit about just for a minute or two about how artifacts can be displayed. So what we can see there, those are watercolors uh, done of uh, early contact with the West. So this is around the time of Captain Cook. Uh, the palace has those original watercolors, but because they would be damaged if they were exposed to light, the ones that you can see there on display are actually uh, copies. They were scanned and then printed uh, so that they would not expose the original, the originals to excess light. Also those frames, another kind of funny Victorian thing, uh, those frames you can see with the gold on them, they're actually sand. The part around the images is sand and then it was painted, uh, painted gold. Now we're going to go over and we're going to cross the central hall and head into the um, queen suite. So the queen side is opposite the king side from the central hall on the second floor. This is a room that has a sort of a, a sad history. This room does not have the furnishings from the monarchy period. And that is because it was in this room in 1895 that Queen Liliuokalani was in prison. So I won't have time to get into all of the history of that, but after the overthrow of the monarchy, there was a rebellion in 1895 to try to put the queen back on the throne. Uh, it was unsuccessful. And at that time, Lili Uokalani was uh, arrested. She was actually given a trial, a military trial. It was in this building in the throne room, which had been converted into a courtroom. Um, she was charged with knowledge of uh, treason to try to overthrow the government that had replaced her, although those people themselves had committed treason by overthrowing her a couple of years before this. Uh, she was sentenced to five years of hard labor and fined $5,000. That was more to humiliate her than anything else. They, that sentence was not carried out, but she was imprisoned in this room for about eight months in 1895. So this room is dedicated uh, to the imprisonment. The, furnishing, the furnishings that you can see there, they're not original, but they're based on what the queen wrote. So she wrote a book about her life and about uh, what happened when she was imprisoned here. And so some of the items that you see are based on the descriptions that the queen herself gave about what she uh, what this room was like when she was a prisoner here. So she was imprisoned in this room uh, for about eight months in 1895. And this is the room that's facing the punch bowl side of the punch bowl street side of the palace on the second floor facing King Street. This room is empty. So this, this room and actually originally the imprisonment room, they were both meant to be guest bedrooms. So this room is empty, but we can see a little bit here about the ceilings and the floors and such. When this was a government building, the inside was totally changed. There was a lot of damage uh, done to it. All that flooring that you can see there, it is not original. It is actually a uh, replacement. It's the same type of flooring. But when this was used as a government building for many years, so from the time of the overthrow of the monarchy up until 1969, this was used as a capital building, essentially. Uh, there was installed in a lot of places in the palace linoleum floors. Um, so these are uh, the original type of wood, but these are not the original floors. They actually, the only place in the palace that has the original floors are the treads on the staircase that we saw when we saw the Grand Hall. So this just gives you a little bit of a sense of the size of the room and gives you a little bit of a better view of the uh, ceilings, the decorations and the ceilings and such. That is uh, the way the ceilings look originally. Again, they were uh, heavily damaged in the decades after the overthrow of the monarchy. And somebody was actually brought out of retirement from Italy to restore these ceilings to their original condition. 
This is the last room that we're going to take a look at on the second floor before we move down down to the throne room to see the last of the state rooms. This is Queen uh, Kapi'olani's bedroom. Queen Kapi'olani was Kalakabu's wife, uh, and she used this as her official bedroom. Also, if we think into the 20th century, after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, this room was actually used as the office of the military governor of Hawaii. Here, I want to show you this photo. I'm going to show you two photos of this room. This one shows you, this is the original layout of the room. And there are some original items, including right on the bed there, those uh, pillow shams and the bedspread that you can see, those are original. They look brand new from the photo, but they're actually 100, over 125 years old. So we have a lot of the original pieces and even some of the original fabrics. So if you look at this arrangement and then you contrast, this is actually what the room looks like uh, today. This is a few years ago. Uh, the arrangement was moved. And so this is not actually the way the room looked in the monarchy period, at least not the arrangement of the furniture, it looked like this. But in order to protect artifacts from uh, touching hands and things from visitors, this uh, room was moved. So this is the furnishings were moved. So this is a little bit of an idea of some of the issues that have to be addressed when you have a historic house or a museum about keeping things as original as possible, but also protecting artifacts as well. So these are the original artifacts, but the arrangement or many of the original artifacts, but the arrangement is not uh, like it was in the monarchy period. Again, in this room, we can see the two kahili, uh, the feather standards that were symbols of Hawaiian royalty. So we're going to go back downstairs and check out the last room. This is the throne room. So this is the largest of the rooms in Iolani Palace. And you can see uh, again, some ancient symbols and some modern symbols as well. The kahili, again, you can see them on either side of the thrones. They are not original, but there were kahili in this room during the monarchy period. And uh, there's another original, oops, a little bit closer here, another original artifact or ancient symbol, and that is between the two thrones. That is a pulo'ulo'u, or a a taboo stick, it was, or a kappa a stick, it was sometimes called as well. This was an ancient symbol of royalty in ancient times. It would have been a shaft of wood uh, covered with a kappa cloth or bark cloth. It was placed in front of royal residences. It was also uh, sometimes uh, carried in front of chiefs as well. The one that we can see here, and I think I have a close up, here's a close up of it. This uh, pulo'ulo'u was a gift to Kalakawa from a ship captain. And the staff there that you can see, that's made from the tusk of a narwhal. So a narwhal is an Arctic whale. And uh, that's, you may have seen pictures or images of narwhals before. They uh, kind of fight with those long tusks up in the Arctic. And the spiraling that you can see there, that is uh, natural. So they were not carved they grew out of the whales like that. Now you can see a close up here of the thrones, the thrones and much of the furniture that we see in this room is original. Uh, even the fabric, you can see the fabric's kind of worn out there. That's the original fabric on the two thrones. So one for the king and one for the queen. Um, all that gold also here we can see the side chairs. These, are, these have been reupholstered so you can see a little bit better what they would have looked like new. Uh, and all that gold that you can see on the thrones and on the chairs and along the walls, that is not gold paint. That's a real 23 karat gold leaf that you can see on everything uh, that is golden in the throne room. So again, this is a, an attempt to uh, demonstrate the wealth of the Hawaiian kingdom to visitors in the 19th century. On the wall, you can see those cases. Those cases uh, show diplomatic orders. So if you remember that very first image that I showed you at the beginning of the tour, showing Kalakawa with his uniform, uh, those different diplomatic orders, they were gifts to him from different countries. 
And so again, by displaying those diplomatic orders in this room, we can see the one of the purposes that the king had, which was to show Hawaii's connections and recognition from other countries. And there are quite a few of these hanging in the throne room from a, a wide variety of countries like Denmark and Spain, Italy, Venezuela, Thailand, all of these places had connections with the Hawaiian kingdom. Uh, and then the last item we want to take a look at here in the throne room are the crown jewels. So the crown jewels are on display in the throne room of Iolani Palace. And there was a king's crown and a queen's crown. This is the king's crown. They were made in England and they were made for the king's coronation. That took place in 1883 on the grounds of the palace. And although the crown jewels uh, that you can see there, they look very Western, uh, they're also Hawaiian too. We see eight arches, those represent the eight Hawaiian islands. We can see those golden leaves, those represent taro or kalo, a, a food source for the Hawaiian people. And even in the band on the bottom, so you can see all those diamonds, these two crowns, I'll show you Queen Kapi'olani's crown in a moment. Uh, these two crowns were made with over a thousand diamonds originally. And in the band between the sets of diamonds are different stones, uh, including some that if you look, they look kind of black. Those are actually kukui nuts. So again, they're more Hawaiian features in the crown jewels, even though they're also a very Western in appearance. This is Queen Kapi'olani's crown. It was very similar uh, in appearance, but it was a little bit uh, smaller. And you probably didn't tell because you didn't look closely enough or it's hard to tell with the photograph that the thrones are slightly different in size too. The king's throne is a little bit bigger than the queen's throne. Uh, this is the coronation dress. So this is one of the things if you've been to the palace but maybe have not been recently, this was just put on display a few months ago. This is a replica of the dress that uh, Queen Kapi'olani wore during her coronation in 1883. So you can see the ermine. The ermine actually came from Russia. Uh, there are some uh, photographs of the dress, so we do know what it looks like, and it's on a semi-permanent display in the palace. So these are two more items of the crown jewels. These will be um, basically the last things we'll see before we take a quick tour down into the basement. Uh, these show the scepter. This is a scepter. This was also made in England. And this is a sword that was used for the coronation as well. Again, Western in appearance, but if you take a look at that sword, you can see the uh, handle or the grip of the sword that looks maybe just like regular leather. That is actually shark skin. So again, we can see Hawaiian features in the crown jewels. So our last stop is the basement. So there are two floors of staterooms. There are actually four floors uh, in the, or four levels in the palace. There is a basement and there is also an attic. Uh, the attic is not part of the tour. Today it's just uh, office space. In the monarchy period, it was actually used for uh, storing the water for the hot and cold uh, water pumping system, piping system that was used throughout the palace. So if we go down to the basement, this was sort of the working heart uh, of the palace. So the palace was run from the basement level. And just gonna see a couple of things down here. This room is uh, the Chamberlain's office. So the Chamberlain would have been the king's uh, chief of staff, the person who actually ran the palace. So we can see that down here, it's not quite as fancy. So this would not have been an area that uh, official visitors would have seen. I uh, just point out one thing there in the photograph on the wall, you can see the telephone. Again, that's a replica. That's where the telephone connected from the King's Library, the one that I showed you up in the, uh, on the second floor before. Uh, you may have, or you may or may not have noticed that there are no light switches. <laughs> so there were no light switches originally. So the Controls for the electricity were actually down in the basement area of the palace, and either all the lights were on or all the lights were off. There wasn't uh, 
uh, a setting for each different room. So maybe at the end of the day, the king would call from his office, from the library on that telephone, maybe call down to the chamberlain's office and uh, have all the lights turned out. This is just another view of the chamberlain's uh, office. Again, you can see it's not quite so fancy. Uh, the large safe that you can see, that's where the crown jewels were stored during the monarchy uh, period. There was another case, there was a leather case that they were in as well. Uh, that's not currently on display, it used to be, but it sat on top of that shelf. And then the last space that we're gonna take a look at in the basement is the kitchen. So the kitchen is where the food would have been prepared. Uh, sometimes it was prepared off-site as well. Uh, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, uh, you may think that that's in Waikiki, but there was one uh, before the one in Waikiki that was actually on uh, Richard Street at the intersection of Richards and Hotel Street. And food could have been prepared there or here in the kitchen as well. And, oops, one more picture actually after that. And the food was brought up to either the first or the second floor by dumbwaiters. So those were little elevators for food. And I guess we'll end with one of these outside uh, pictures here. I just wanted to show you folks some of the stuff that happens for special ceremonies. So if you've ever been on King Street around the middle of November, uh, you'll see the palace decorated like this. These are the decorations for the king's birthday. Uh, Kalakaua's birthday is on November the 16th, and these decorations that you can see are replicas of what was actually used to decorate the palace in 1886 for Kalakaua's 50th birthday. So if you ever wondered what those decorations are, they are for the king's birthday, and they are accurate. There are photos showing what they look like uh, in 1886 for the king's 50th uh, jubilee. So if you ever are down there on November the 16th, there's also a special ceremony uh, where you can see uh, a review of the Royal Guard. Those are uh, members of the Hawaii Air National Guard who are a Hawaiian or part Hawaiian and they wear their uh, replicas of uniforms that were actually worn during Kalaw uh, Kawa's time. And so there'll be a review ceremony, uh, usually by descendants of Hawaiian royalty. Well, that brings us to the end of the tour today. So hopefully you enjoy taking a look, a virtual look at some of the rooms of uh, Iolani Palace. And I guess if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer those for you. And uh, so let's do that. If anyone has any questions, we can, I'll try to take those. See, oh, I see something here. Okay, well, I don't see any question. Oh, I see question. What is the history of the fort? Okay, <laughs> so um, uh, Hassan is asking about the building that's next to the palace. I don't know if I have a picture of it here. Let me, I'll try to answer that question for you. I do have some more images and I do have a picture of that actually. Here, so this is the building I think that Hassan is talking about. Uh, this is called the Royal Barracks or the Halekoa or the Soldier's House. This is where the Royal Guard was during the monarchy period. This is an interesting building because it's not, it's actually older than the palace. So we'll talk a little bit about its uh, construction. It was built uh, about 10 years or so before the palace during the reign of Kamehameha V. And it's made out of coral. So many of the old, really old buildings in Honolulu, even downtown, uh, like this building or the Kauaihao Church on King Street, if you guys were over at the Fort Street campus before, the Catholic Cathedral, the Our Lady of Peace Cathedral, it's actually built out of coral. You can't see that because it's been faced over and given the appearance of uh, other materials. But many of the old buildings are actually made out of coral. 
that were carved out of a reef. Uh, so this is a building that's made out of coral. It was designed by a German architect uh, to look like a little medieval European castle. So the Royal Guard was uh, housed in this building. The other sort of neat thing about this building is that it's not where it was originally uh, built. So this building was on the property of what is the state capitol today. So when the state capitol was built in the 1960s, or they started to build that, this building was preserved by actually dismantling it. So all the coral blocks were taken apart. They were all numbered to make sure they wouldn't get lost. And then this uh, building was reconstructed on the grounds of the palace. This is at the corner of Richard Street and Hotel Street. So today it's actually used as the gift shop and a ticket office for the palace, but that building was originally the home of the Royal Guard. Okay. Oops, okay, any other questions here? Let's see. So I wanted to ask about a time when I, a building between the library and the palace. Okay, so that I don't have a picture of, but the building that you can see between the palace and the state library, which is on the Punchbowl Street side, that is the old archives building. So it still says the word archives on it. Um, it was built at the beginning of the 20th century to house records. So when Hawaii was uh, taken over by the United States, there was a thought that all of the records, including the Hawaiian Kingdom records, would be sent to Washington, uh, and the government didn't want that. So they had to build a special building, a fireproof building, to house the records. And so this is actually one of the first, I believe, ever built uh, for this special purpose in the United States. It was the old archives building. It was used uh, for storing documents and such. And later it became government offices. And that building today is used as the headquarters of the Friends of Iolani Palace. So the director and some of the other staff are in that, uh, are in that building today. Yeah, so it wouldn't have been there in the monarchy period, but it was completed around the turn of the century, I believe about 1903 or so. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, well, I guess I've answered everybody's questions. So again, I guess I will uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, palace presentation. Do be on the lookout for tours of the palace through HPU. They're always free uh, for students and assuming everything is up and open pretty soon, uh, I hope we'll be able to see one or have one in the fall. Okay, aloha everyone and thank you for joining us.